Mr. Ryan. Welcome back oh. to another Ooh. Team Profile and Projection here on Talking Baseball, brought to you by SeatGeek. Today we got the Philadelphia Phillies. Oh, Code yeah. John Boy playoffs. Code John Boy playoffs. Code pre- John, John Boy pre- pre- preseason. preseason. That's a John long Boy Eventually pre-season. it'll be the playoffs. Maybe. Eventually, yeah. The Philadelphia female horses. That's Philly. Jake. Who did they add to the team? Your defending National League champion, Philadelphia Phillies. Who did they add? Um, um, Trey Turner. Oh, oh, a little bit. You on top of his cards, Trev? Didn't ask. Trey Turner, <laughs> eleven years, three hundred mil. You beefing with him? He's about to have one of those fancy basements we talk about on this show. Taiwan Walker. I think he's got a pop shot down there. Four for 72. Matt Strom pitching some innings for them. 15 mil for Matty Strom. Go get it, kids. <laughs> Dirty Craig in the pen. Josh Harrison. How about that Gregory Soto trade? I actually like that for them. A little 2.0 out there. Powerful lefties. We all know about the Noah Song story. They lost. Gibby. Uh. Your boy, boy. Cindergard, Led Zeflin, yep. Gene Segura, they'll miss him. He hits. D Rob out of the pen. Matt Veerling gone. Nick Maton gone. A couple other bodies. Didi's unsigned. Corey Evil, Kniebel, Odu Bell. Uh, Trev, what's the lineup look like? Because I know they mash and it's a hitter's ballpark. Bryce is out till midseason. Like, what? Ah. <laughs> This lineup bangs. You add Trey Turner, who is my favorite player in baseball. And no, I don't own, like, any of his cards. I don't. I probably should. Uh, Yeah, he'll be at the top of the lineup playing shortstop for the foreseeable Mm. future. How many years? 11. 11 years. He's young. He looks younger than he is, so... It, whatever. He's going to be at the top line that for helps. a long time. Playing shortstop. You got Kyle Schwarber. You got Reese Hoskins. You got JT Rio Muto. Castellanos. Mm. Expect big... Bounce back years from him and Alec Bohm. Derek Hall, DHing a little bit to start the year. I think he's going to get a chance. I really do. Bryson Stott, Brandon Marsh, and then the bench, Jake Cave, Josh Harrison, Edmundo Sosa. I love that. And Garrett Stubbs mm. is the backup catcher. You mentioned our guy Bryce. He'll be out until uh, midseason, all-star break, something like that. But this lineup is something else. It's going to be the calling card for the team. But then you look at the rotation, James – Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe the rotation is just that good, too. The rotation is good. It's got some question marks of late. Aaron Nola, Zach Wheeler, you know them, Taiwan Walker. Ranger Suarez got pulled from the World Baseball Classic. They said, hey, come back. Your arm's tight. He said, how'd you guys know? But they think it's not a big deal. And uh, Bailey Falter, as of right now, seems like he's going to get the fifth spot which they thought was a competition with the youngster Andrew Painter uh, getting a chance but he's been shut down for four weeks due to a UCL sprain they don't think it's serious but those words always seem very serious so uh, and hopefully whatever Rangers going through isn't that serious too but Bailey Falter pitched pretty well for them and he said as long as I'm with those 26 guys he means 25 because he's one of them that he's happy no matter what his role is so Mm. Mm, mm. Yeah, so mm. I don't know. I mean, the Phillies, are they trying to win the division or are they trying to survive for the playoffs? Did they fully, you know, love their strategy? Like, hey, just be in the wild card. I think they want to win the division for sure. The Me bullpen too. is uh, was probably the Achilles heel last year for most of the season. They did find a rhythm towards the end, which yes. teams fi- they do in the playoffs. Um, but, you know, they have uh, Sir Anthony Dominguez. I think they just locked him up. Jose Alvarado, Craig Kimbrell. You mentioned Soto, who they brought mm. over. Nelson, Bellotti, Cobro, Strom, Connor Brogdon, and Cobro. Mm. So they've addressed the weakness from last year. So to answer your question, I don't think they're just trying to limp into the playoffs like they did last year and get hot. I think this team is looking to be hot all season long, even without Bryce. Get Bryce back as, you know, your midseason acquisition, essentially, and then go. I think they will uh, not be scared of the perils of a slow start. Sure, because they, they went through it. Yeah, they went through it, and it's kind of like, hey, just get right at the right time. We know that our formula works there. Our home crowd worked there. I saw an interview with – it wasn't with Dombrowski. Say his name again. Dombrowski. Okay. Who was – Who? ah, oh, man, maybe it was. No, it wasn't. Who else is involved with the Phillies? 
Sam Fold. Sam Fold. It was an interview with him. And he's, they asked him, do you think it's a crapshoot or not? Like, do you think it is just get to the playoffs and then it's roll the dice? Or do you think you have to be a certain team for the playoffs? And he did... I was glad because sometimes we've heard these general managers say, no, it's a crapshoot, you know. But he said, no, I think you, there's a certain formula. I think we did really well. He said, I also think our home crowd and us being able to play in our stadium mm. really did help. I, I think he meant like more like playing to their stadium, like their, right. their bats and their swings and right. all that. Um, but their bullpen was, was good in the postseason and then got even better. So Harper took 16 swings off a tee. Let's go. I like that a lot. Andrew Painter being hurt, uh, we don't know the extent of it, like we mentioned. That's kind of a big blow. If he if he comes up, he's 19 years old. Yeah, we don't even know what he was going to be, so. I don't know. I mean, they talk very highly of this guy, and if you've seen him pitch, like he's going to be a guy in the big leagues, just not going to be at the beginning of this season. But that would have been nice. I mean, that, that makes that rotation just that much longer, which we all like here. Going over a 162, if you're talking about them winning the division, he's got to be a part of it. Um but this, I mean, they're going to make the playoffs. This team is really good. They're very confident. Name a more confident team mm. in the National League. Padres. Ooh, yeah. Dodgers. A lot of confident teams in the National League. A lot League. of confident. <laughs> uh, athletes can be confident. Braves. Um, I think there's going to be checkpoints in this season. Where are we at when Bryce comes back? What's, like is that the first checkpoint? I, uh, I, I think the other, the elephant in the room is, we, this is team number seven. This is a seventh ranked team by our, our listeners. By our loyal, yeah. the best listeners in the world who, oh my God, you're leaving a review right now? You're That's subscribing. Business. Um, B-L-I-W, blue, blue, best listeners in the there's world. There's two teams blue. Blue. in their division blue. that we haven't gotten to yet. So when we do the whole regular season thing. They I'm, love that. I'm personally, I don't think, I think they're like, let's just dance and we'll go. Yeah. Like if. If the Mets and Braves go nutty and they're chasing 105, 106, and they're sitting there at, you know, 87 wins and making the dance, I think Philly goes, all right, so yeah, we're both in the playoffs. Yeah. So, all right, then let's do it. You guys sweat and stress yourselves out, and we'll just see you in the dance. Yeah. Okay, I could, I could see that. Because we, we've seen now uh, one year of these playoffs play out, and we don't think there's a lot of um, – advantage to having that buy over the first you know wild card round really right i mean we we saw it for one year and it didn't it didn't help like yeah show snuck by the mariners and philly ran through and they were a wild card team i love kind of the make like what trey turner does for the makeup of their top five maybe six hitters i think they get kind of light on the back end but I they didn't have, like, that different approach and speed approach last year. It was just kind of all thump. And Trey Turner can, mm. can hit for pop, but I just like his – he led the league in infield singles last year. He also can hit bombs. He can steal bases, especially with the shift. Also, they get a steady shortstop. That was a position that they kind of started, and then would do a defensive replacement, and then there was no, no bat ever came with it. So, I think – I mean, what is the note here? Like, 29 – MLB executives of the 30 said it was the best signing this offseason. Mm-hmm. I, I think I agree. I think that's a really, really good sign up signing for the team. Thank God his fiance is from New Jersey. A couple of things that really jumped out to me um, at that second half of the line that you're talking about, because you, you know the names up top. If you've, if you've watched baseball the last eight years, you know Castellanos, Real Muto, Hoskins, Harper, Trey Turner. Um, man, A, Castellanos – might have been hurt last year or something because his hitting stats just weren't there. So let's that could be a, that can be something that can change for them instantly. Boom breaks yeah. out a little bit last year. You know, people are wondering if there's another level to that. Brandon Marsh came over and was good for them. So you're talking about a young third baseman, a young center fielder. I'll throw my guy Bryson Stott in the mix, yep. who had to kick over to second. You got three young guys with real potential at the bottom of that lineup that. Are we talking about a front half of the Phillies lineup, or are we talking about one of the best lineups in baseball? If those kids click, I don't know. It's a good team. Love Dom, bro. There's a lot of potential for runs being scored here. We have the rotation they can hold um, at the beginning of the game, and then we talked about the bullpen a little bit, kind of coming into their own last year in the postseason, then making some additions uh, for a 162 campaign. It's, this team's going to be tough to beat. I know we mentioned the Mets and the Braves, and they're going to be good too. And I know every time we get on this and we look at these rosters, especially now, we're going to be liking them. 
Mm. But there's just something about getting to the World Series, losing the World Series, and then coming back the next year and really being hungry. And, and you know what? Maybe you're right. Maybe mm. this team doesn't care about the regular season whatsoever. Ooh. Because Let's lose. It's not like that, but like they only like they're going to be itching to get to the postseason again. They're going to be itching to have that vibe that was yeah. in the stadium. Did you see the scoreboard they're putting in? I did see that. Holy mm. shit. It's we big. Like that. We like that. You can see that thing from everywhere in the city. This team. Even on the, some airplane ride, you can see it. They are going to be focused on the postseason. So now my, I mean, our overrun that we're going to talk about, it mm-hmm. might be altered. Because I think that all eyes are on the postseason. I might have said differently earlier in the show, but now I'm saying that at the end of the show. Okay. And it's not the end of the show. It's not. Well, yeah. Middle of the show. Uh, I like Topper being coming back and him getting the gig. He was like the calm to Girardi storm. And then they were like, we don't need the storm. Let's just have the calm. It's just calm. Yeah. So he's back. Uh, I think I'm taking the over. Ooh. DraftKings over under is 88 and a half. 88 and a half. What'd they win last year? 87? I'd have to do a lot of math on it, you know? Okay. Like, Ken, how many games are the Mets and everyone? How many? What were the records of the AL East last year? Because that was three good teams, or f- like what was so last year the NL East, and then uh, BBD looks at, sounds like he has the AL Braves one hundred one, Mets one hundred one, they tied. So Phillies were eighty seven last year in the AL Jeez. Biebs. Yankees had ninety nine, Blue Jeez. Jays ninety two, Rays eighty six, Orioles eighty three, oh. Red Sox seventy eight. Might take the under then. So it's hard to have the third place team get over eighty uh, over like eighty eight wins. And here's the problem. I have them winning exactly 87 again, so I am taking the under, and you're on the under, which means Trev has to take the over. He's not going to take the under on the defending National League champions. It's interesting because oh, right. I see – we talk about the relief pitchers a lot. We have the rankings of some of the stuff of last year. ERA, 23rd in baseball. Whip, 25th in baseball. Walks per nine, 28th in baseball. You clean up the walks a little bit in the bullpen. You win some more games. You get Trey Turner on your team, and you guys are taking the under? No, I'm taking the over. I think this team uh, – I disagree with what Trev said where they don't care about the regular season. I think they're like, not only should we get to the playoffs, we should make sure we have home field advantage. Let's win the division. Oh, I like that. Now you're yeah, getting me back over. a little bit. I, it's not that I don't think they care about the regular <laughs> season, bro, now that you're bringing me back to this point. <laughs> I got you in a spin cycle. This I've team is changed, better. I've, this, I've pivoted you to both sides. This team is better than they were last year. I just yeah. changed. I'm changing. They're no, no, better no, than I'm they were the last over. year. I thought they were going to win 87 games. They're going to win 88, so they get a game better. Still under. Still them. under. Jake's so still I just changed under. that. You guys are crazy. Yeah. When I think, you know what? If they win their first game of the season, I'm going to take the over at 89. No, you can't do that. And if they that. lose no. the first game of the season, I'm going to take uh, the under at 88. Locked. That's not even what That's stamped. Because it's, it's 88 and a half. It's 88 and a half. 88 and a half. Oh, well, whatever. When I think of the Phillies, for some reason, I automatically think of John Crook. Like, automatically. Yeah. Makes Legend. sense. Legend. Uh, and he played in the 90s. True. So Maybe I, some of the 80s, too. Last year in the 90s, I'm going to go with in the 90 win range. Can you find out when Crook, Crook debuted? First game is in 1986. That's the under. Last game. And that would be the under, Trev, 86. His last game was 1995. I love a 95-win Phillies team this year. John oh, Crutt, oh. go get him. He's in the booth. Excellent in the booth. I really like John So Crutt. 95 games, You pro- who do you have them jumping, the Braves or the Mets? I don't want to say it. Okay, find All out right, later. You're gonna have to- Jake's on the under. Mm-hmm. I'm flexing based on the well, first game of the season, and Trev's on the over. I'm on the over. I believe in this team big time. The Moxie. You want to talk about Moxie? It's this team. They do have Moxie. I don't want to talk about Moxie. Goodbye. Over all day, John Crook, 95. Love Philly. I kind of am Philly. Never really had a good Philly cheese stick while I was there. Right now. Your owner has abs. Pretty cool. Your former team. My former team, yeah. Me and Gabe Kapler were running that city.